So in today's video, I'm going to show you a simple method for painting this layered storybook landscape. Along the way, you'll learn a lot of tips and techniques, and by the end, you'll be able to use them to paint all kinds of landscapes like this. As usual, I'll list all the brushes I'm using here in the description, but I think you can follow this process with any brushes you're comfortable with. And to start, I'm going to make the background scene first. So for that, I'm going to use a kind of light sky blue tone and the abstract round, and I'm just going to do some side to side strokes for the sky. After that, I'm going to grab the water blender brush and use it to soften the bottom edge. And after that, I want to add some rolling green hills in the distance. So I'm going to make a layer above my sky and I'm going to use a kind of medium bluish green tone. Once again, I'll switch back to the abstract round and I'll just make those hills like this. After that, I'll grab the water blender again, and I'm also going to soften the bottom edge of this one. And that looks pretty good. I want to add kind of one more kind of line of hills that's connecting to the foreground. So I'll make another blank layer, choose a lighter kind of more uh, warm green tone for this one, and I'll paint it on the same way. Now the reason I did all these kind of three elements on different layers is I want to kind of adjust them and dial in the colors a little bit. Mostly I want to make sure there's good contrast between the sky and also between the hills. So I'm going to kind of uh, mess with each element kind of individually, just adjusting the uh, hue saturation and brightness. And after that, I think I also want to kind of stretch out this scene a little bit. So I'm going to move the hills down. And since I'm happy with how this background scene looks so far, I'm going to merge all the layers for it together onto one. And then I want to crop it a little bit. And a technique I use that's just kind of quick and easy is to just use the arrow tool set to freeform. And I can just move this off the edge of the artboard. You can see when I pull it back, it's kind of chopped that edge. And I'm gonna go ahead and do this to all four edges. Now, I think kind of by chance, the colors in this scene turned out pretty good. But if it's not the case when you're painting this, uh, don't worry about it. I'm gonna show you a trick later on about how to kind of fix the colors and make them more harmonious. For now, I'm just going to push ahead and paint all the trees. And even though there's a lot of trees in this scene, we only need to paint five, and it's super easy to do that. First, I'm going to make a new layer. For the brush, you could use any brush. I think I'm just going to use the abstract round. And I'll just rough out a tree. After that, I'm going to switch to a scratchier brush. I think I'll go to the drawing tab and use the little pine brush. And I'll use this one to paint the trunk. And then to finish up this tree, I'm going to use the eraser brush, set to the fine liner pen, and I'll use it to cut back everything so it has a smooth edge. And it's really just as simple as that. Now I'm going to go through and paint four more trees using the same technique, just making sure each tree is on its own layer for now. And while I'm painting these, one thing I'm keeping in mind is I have control of course over the color, but also I have control over the texture of the branches. And by doing that texture kind of very differently for each tree, it makes them look a lot less uh, copy pasted. And once all the trees are finished, you can see they look like this. They're just each kind of by themselves on their own layer. And I want to rearrange these trees into basically three different rows. And I think the best way to do that is to first group all the trees together. Then I'll close that group. And I'm going to make three copies, basically one copy for each row. So the second copy here, I'll just move it down a bit. And then the third copy, I'll move it down a bit further. And I'm gonna work on making a unique arrangement for each row, just one at a time. So I'm gonna turn off the ones I don't need and just work on the top one for now. And I'll just use the arrow tool to kind of quickly position each tree just loosely where I think it looks good. I also might change the order of the layers of the trees. So certain trees are above other trees but there's no science here, I'm just going by feeling. And I think that's pretty good for the first row of trees. So I'll move on to the second row. That's this one here, and I'll turn that group on. And I'm gonna use the same process again, just kind of positioning them with the arrow tool. But this time, I'm gonna make the arrangement very different. I'm also gonna shift the hue, brightness, and saturation of each tree to make them look more different as well. And since this illustration has a house in the middle, I'm going to try to leave a slightly empty space there. And for
for the last row of trees at the bottom, I'm gonna use pretty much the same process, but I'm gonna enlarge them all because they're slightly closer to us. And there we go. I think this arrangement of trees looks pretty good. This next step is very optional, but I think it looks nice if you kind of skew each row of trees. So once again, each row is kind of its own group. So I'm gonna select one group as an example, and then I can grab the arrow tool, set to distort, and I can use this kind of center blue node and lean all the trees in that group in one direction. And I'm gonna repeat this process for each row of trees, so they're all leaning towards the right. Now at this point, the trees are finished and I'm totally happy with how they look. So I'm gonna go ahead and merge them all together onto one layer and I wanna crop them as well, kind of using a similar process we used to crop the background. So I'm gonna select the tree layer and the background layer at the same time. And once again, I'll just move it off the edge of the artboard to cut it off. And you could definitely do all this cropping later on but I like to do it as I'm painting because it helps me visualize the final kind of layout. So at this point, the background scene here could be finished, but there's two more details that I wanna add. I wanna add clouds in the sky and also some smaller trees out here in the distance. So to do that, I'm gonna make a layer that's above the background, but still below the trees. For the clouds, I'm gonna use pure white and I'm gonna to switch to a brush in the drawing tab called the gloaming brush. I think this is my favorite brush for clouds. And I'm gonna use it at uh, kind of a large size, very lightly, and just sketch out, uh, sketch out some blobs here. Usually what I do is I'll do larger blobs towards the top, and then as I go down closer to the horizon, I'll do some smaller ones. After that, I'll grab the eraser brush and use it to flatten the bottom of each cloud. And these look pretty good, but kind of as usual, they're not quite centered. So I'm gonna use the arrow tool to kind of position them a little bit better. After that, I'm gonna continue on this same layer and paint a bunch of tiny trees, just pretty much with zero detail, just off in the background. And I'm just using the same colors I used for the trees in the foreground. And for the brush, I'm just using the fine liner pen. And it's definitely a very subtle detail, but I think it gives this illustration a bit more depth. So this is a problem that often happens with me and you probably can relate to it. Basically, I'm so focused on painting that I'm not really thinking about the colors and the overall color palette maybe as much as I should. So I'm gonna show you how to kind of harmonize everything after it's already been painted. So to do that, I'm gonna merge everything so far together onto one layer and I'm gonna make a duplicate of it. And while this a duplicate is selected, the one on top, I'm gonna go to my adjustments and I'm gonna go to gradient map now there's a bunch of options down here. I recommend selecting Mocha, the one at the end. And if I tap on it, it lets me change this gradient map. Now to change the colors here, I can just tap on a square and it lets me choose. But I highly, highly recommend changing your kind of color selection option down here over to this one. This lets you see the numbers and you can select each box and shift the color and the saturation to whatever you want but there's a key thing here that I've never seen anyone else mention in any tutorials. It's basically the brightness slider. It can be set to anything, but it absolutely should be set to a point that represents the position on the gradient. So that sounds like a lot, but it's actually very simple. Over here on the left side, this represents zero. Zero all the way to 100. So that means the brightness here should be set to zero. You can choose any color you want though. Obviously the one over here on the far right, the brightness needs to be set to 100. You can change the color like that. Basically you can imagine this just like a scale of zero to 100. So as long as you kind of conform to that and make sure the brightness level is correct, you can go through here and choose any hue and saturation you want and create an interesting overlay uh, for your kind of illustration here. And then to apply this gradient map, I'm just gonna leave the kind of adjustments by tapping on that. And of course this effect right off the bat is way, way, way too strong, which is why we made this on a separate layer. So remember we have the duplicate here and only the duplicate has this effect applied. So to control that effect, I'm just gonna lower the opacity. And definitely, definitely uh, this technique is a lot more technical than what I usually cover in my videos. And certainly in this case, I didn't apply the effect uh, all that strong. I was already a little bit happy with the colors, how they were, 
but hopefully you can see how this technique can be applied to other situations where you want to change the colors quite a bit. And with that, we can finally move on and start painting the house. And the house is super easy. I'm going to make a blank layer above everything. And the house color is going to be a very light kind of beige tone. To fill in the actual shape of the house, I'm going to use the selection tool set to color fill. This basically lets me make a box and it just automatically fills it in. So this is what I'm going to use to kind of rough out my house shape. I think that looks pretty good. Now I want to add some kind of roof peaks. So I'm going to change to freehand and I'm just going to tap to kind of plot those out. And obviously it's just kind of sitting on top of the trees like a sticker. So before I fix that, I'm going to make sure it's exactly in the right position I want because I won't be able to change this later on. There we go. Then I'm going to erase it through to show the trees in the foreground. So to do that, I'm going to lower the opacity of our house layer just temporarily so I can see those trees. Then I'm going to use the eraser brush set to the fine liner pen just because it's a little bit of a rough brush and I'll use that to erase the house. And I think that looks pretty good. So I'll set the opacity of the house back to 100 and I'm going to move on and paint the roof. For that, I'm going to use the fine liner pen and first I'm going to kind of draw out the outline of the roof and I'm doing these kind of long presses at the end of each stroke and this makes Procreate kind of snap it into a straight line. After that, I'll just drag in my color to fill it out. And I think while I've got the uh, fine liner pen selected, I'm going to use it to do the chimneys as well. Now for this house, I want to give it a kind of brick texture, kind of a brick or flagstone texture. So I'm going to make a blank layer above the house. I'm going to choose a darker version of the house color. Same fine liner pen brush. And I'm just going to go over it and do these kind of brick shapes like this. And the reason I did these bricks on their own layer is because I want to set the transparency mode to multiply. Then I'll adjust it until I can just barely see the bricks. Then I'll merge it together with the house. Now for the remaining details on the house, it's super simple. I'm just going to add four windows. So I'll make a blank layer above the house. I'll use a very light desaturated blue tone kind of for the silhouette of the windows. Then I'll use a smaller brush size and a similar kind of a reddish brown tone as the roof. And this is what I'll use to do the window frames. And the reason I did the window on its own layer is I'm just gonna duplicate it four times and use the arrow tool to move each window into position. After that, I'll merge all four windows together onto one layer. Then I'm gonna use the eraser brush to cut them out wherever the trees overlap. And then I'll merge the windows together with the house just to keep things organized. And once the house is finished, I want to add some smoke coming out of the chimneys. So I'm going to make a blank layer above the house. I'm going to choose pure white. And as usual, I'm going to do the smoke with the uh, gloaming brush in the drawing tab. And I feel like having the smoke kind of going off to this side makes the illustration a little bit out of balance. So I want to add something here. And I think I'm just going to add a couple of birds. So to do that, I'm going to make another blank layer. And I'm just going to rough out a bird using a dark bluish tone. After that, I'm going to duplicate this bird two more times. And I'm going to use the warp tool to adjust each one so they look a little bit different. After that, I'll merge all the birds together onto one layer. And kind of refine the position and size. And as a finishing touch, I want to add a kind of rough edge to this whole scene. So I'll make another blank layer above everything. I'm going to use pure white. I'm going to switch to a charcoal brush. I think 6B compressed is okay. And I'm just going to use this at a medium size to kind of dress the edge. And just like that, our storybook landscape is finished. If you think I've earned it, please give this video a like. Since you watched the video all the way to the end, I wanted to let you know that I have a secret Instagram page called Procreate Watercolor Studio and this is where I post a lot of behind the scenes photos along with some illustrations I'm working on and I'd love to see you there.